Hey YouTube, welcome back to King's Court. I am Shrine King, and today we're going to do a guide slash review of the T-54 Tier 9 medium tank in the Russian line, of one of the Russian lines. There are uh, one of the Russian medium lines. There's two, uh, to be precise. And, and what's funny is this one actually leads into two tanks themselves. So this one leads into T-62 Alpha, and then the Object 140. Uh, this line overall is pretty strong. Uh, it gets to be a lot of fun, especially at the later tiers. So by the time you get to the tier 9, it really is, it's something else. It's really enjoyable. Um, so speaking on, right, so as a review of the tank, like what are the pros and what are the cons of the tank? Well, so this tank has a lot of pros. Um, it has a good gun. So it has high penetration, has decent accuracy for a Russian tank. Um, and it has decent alpha, so we're talking about like 320 alpha um, with I think like 248 penetration or something like that, um, which that's really really darn good, right? Um, now on top of that, it's very mobile. It is low profile, which means it gets camo benefit out of the low profile because it makes it harder for tanks to see it because they have to reference multiple points on a tank to have better opportunities to spot a tank. Uh, and then on top of that, it has decent eyes. Uh, now with that, that said though, right, your eyes are only, like, you still have to have your turret capable of, of overseeing areas. So if you have stuff blocking you because you're, you're low profile and they're in the way, that will interrupt your vision, so then it, that part will make it harder to spot. Uh, and the other part is it's armored. So uh, strangely armored, right? So it's, it's a light... Um, fast moving tank but yet it has armor capable of blocking shots now with that said the hall is able to block some shots uh, especially at the tier or tier lower but at higher tiers like tier 10 it most likely will not the turret on the other hand will most likely block most shots from all all the tiers uh, so that makes it to where this tank holds a higher advantage if it can get hauled down or uh, only expose its turret. Now, with those kind of pros, the question is, like, well, what are the cons? So one, one con is it is actually lighter. So there are other mediums that are heavier. Um, obviously, there's heavies that are a lot heavier. There are tank destroyers that are heavier than this medium. So that means ramming is not necessarily the best option in this tank. If you ram a target in this tank, besides a light, uh, there's a good chance you're going to take a lot more damage uh, to yourself than to what you take to or what you do to them. So just bear that in mind. Um, the other part there is it doesn't really have a lot of gun depression. Now it does have some. It is better than some of the uh, Russian tanks that I've seen before. So that makes it uh, kind of cool in that, that regard, but if you're competing or comparing to other nations and so on and so forth, like the overall scale of the game, it's not that great in its depression. So with all your pros and your cons, like, and this is part of the like review of the tank, you know, is it worth it kind of stuff. Because uh, I have to compare it to not one line, but two lines, right? So the, like I said, there's this line that goes through and it unlocks two tanks, and then there's the other line that actually unlocks only one tank, and that's the Object 430 line, which that that tank's design is different. So like this one's very mobile um, and has uh, oh, decent camo, decent spotting, uh, and a good gun. The other one actually has really good spotting. It has long-range eyes, and it has very good camo, strangely enough which makes the other the other line the 430 line a good counter scout um, but it's better played as a kind of like almost like a tank destroyer so it doesn't necessarily take front line very often um, i do know that when you get to like the 432 it has strangely more armor than you would expect um, so it actually gets to a place out that you can kind of be well rounded um, but when you get to the 430 the end result it's more of a tank destroyer in design. Um, now, with that said, that one you would actually get into a place where you're kind of supportive of the tank destroyer, and then you would be counter scouting in case like your front line falls apart or anything like that. This tank, though, um, and this line is more towards like maneuverability, consistently assisting your team, stuff like that. So, with 
if I were to recommend a line, especially if you're kind of new to the game, I would recommend this line over the other one. Um, if you are a very experienced player and had a lot of experience with tank destroyers and maybe even scouts, then I would actually say probably 430 would be a good line to try. Um, but the other part is this line actually unlocks two tanks at tier 10. So I would highly recommend, especially if you're trying to get into the tier 10 game, having multiple options for like clan wars is, is generally good, right? And both, both uh, tier 10 options out of this line are definitely worth it. So this tank, absolutely worth it. Now, one thing I review when it comes to the actual lines is, is it worth playing it through without burning any any experience, right? So like, well, you get um, your free experience and stuff like that, and those are all good, right? And typically, for, for me, what I recommend uh, to all players is while you're playing the game, save your free experience for those kind of tanks that are let's say subpar in performance that cause a lot of agitation and you just can't stand playing them this tank you will most likely have a real joy ride with now that said uh, when you get the better guns that's when it really starts to shine uh, when you're starting out the guns aren't that bad so if you can deal with the initial gun I would recommend not free experiencing into the better guns because it's not cheap it's like 56,000 experience just to get into one of the next guns um, if you are going for a gun I highly recommend that you first go for the top gun um, there are two tier 10 guns listed one has higher alpha but less penetration the other one has higher uh, penetration less alpha but better aim time and accuracy i highly recommend that you go with the one with the higher penetration right so while alpha is good penetration helps deliver consistency in your damage so it's it's a matter of having a scenario where you're able to do the damage consistently over having random cases where your damage was significantly higher. Now, as I mentioned, um, we also have a guide side of this. So, because of this tank's mobility, because of its well-roundedness, um, there are a lot of flexibilities that you can play in this tank. But it is a medium, and that means it's technically a support-style tank. Um, you now with that said it's not necessarily like oh hey all you're doing is trying to spot everybody as a scout is supposed to you know or oh you're just trying to nail multiple targets and splash and suppress them and, and you know provide damage where they're trying to hide uh, it's artillery right uh, medium is well rounded in the sense that it's like all right well sometimes you might want to you might need to do front lines sometimes you might need to stay back and snipe sometimes you might have to be the scout sometimes you might need to just sit still in a bush to, to counter scout if you can so in this one uh, my team on the flank that we were on me and the Skoda were working really well together keeping pressure on the line trying to flank um, noting who was the bigger threat uh, so for example like the scorpion G was a big threat so when the heavy came to push um, even though he didn't really make good choices he did push through and we made sure not to allow it to go to waste so we pushed the scorpion G made sure to kill him as quickly as possible before he can really pump out any more damage and then here I didn't realize the artillery was actually going to be right in the spot where they can actually shoot me so here like I mentioned so at the tier so tier 8 tank attempted to pen, pen me wasn't able to pen me because I actually have good enough armor now there I took it right in the side so that there's no way I don't like that arm, arm this tank's armor is not that good so sadly in this brawl I lose um, but it does turn out that the team is able we already have it kind of locked down between taking that flank and buying enough time and, and keeping the concentration on us while we're we were still breaking them down it's a win and it's a good win so this tank as you're playing it um, and, and with most mediums right you're looking at hit and run tactics uh, which that means and mobility right so the idea is uh, not always is it the sense that hey you hit some targets you know that the targets are there do you need to stay there uh, the targets will typically always look for you in the same place that you were at so you actually have the option of maneuvering around in this tank quite often uh, but that that same statement because of the armor and the aggressive style of this tank 
there is a lot of potential for you to be a frontliner and pushing for your team. And not only that, but your team will also kind of expect it at times. So bear that in mind when playing this tank. Um, I don't necessarily always recommend that you play super aggressive. I would recommend t kind of taking a gander at the opponent team, right? So one, see how many artillery they have. Two, see what kind of heavies they have. Um, so certain heavies will go to different locations. For example, super conquerors like to go where there's hills and stuff like that. This tank does not necessarily benefit from a lot of hills, right? Because if there is a lot of hills and it doesn't have the depression, it doesn't really come through with a lot of uh, potential damage opportunities because it can't really get the line of sight or uh, line of fire, I should say, on certain targets. So you want to stick to kind of like flat areas, but that also makes it a little challenging because a lot of the flat areas is also where the heavies go, especially like super heavies, right? So like E100s and the mouse, um, or for example, like a T10, right? Uh, T10 is is very dangerous to a T-54 because you're both kind of like level playing ground on you want to be in a flat area so you're both looking for the same kind of areas the only difference is the T-10 has some crazy armor from the front which makes it really hard to deal with and it has a very good gun so it can actually penetrate you even through your turret especially if they start running premium so um, this match here it's going to be a good example or demonstration to playing where I'm going to uh, constantly maneuver around. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to scout for the team, I'm going to take front line, I'm going to see if I can't uh, help my team do a lot of damage, and you'll see like I'm going to ping a lot, I'm going to communicate and try to you know make sure that my team is aware of where I'm going, what I'm trying to do, everything like that. So the first game you'll see was very aggressive, I was uh, dishing out a lot of damage, using uh, the terrain to my advantage as well, so I was trying to just make sure that there's a lot of points where I'm just keeping my turret exposed, only my turret. Uh, and you'll see that also in here where I'm going I'm to use it, uh, some of the terrain, where I kind of stay lower to the ground and all that you can really see is my turret. Um, but for the aspects of the guide and the review, that's pretty much it. So yes, definitely worth it. I would highly recommend picking this line, um, especially for the Russian line. Uh, not only that, but I do recommend this line is actually one of your first lines, uh, to be truthful, right? So the grind to the, through this line is actually not bad. It's it's pretty enjoyable. There are a lot of good tanks on this line. Um, whereas like other nations, some of them are really nice and some of them really kind of rough. They're, they're just a hard, harsh point. Uh, and then, uh, like I said, when you go to play it, you, it's well-rounded. So there's a lot of things that you can do. Um, I just recommend, you know, stay low profile. Try to make, like you'll see here, I'm just, I, I'm, I, while I could have pushed up and made sure to get a better chance of a shot, I try to make sure that I'm, I'm at that point where I'm, it's like I barely have a shot. And that's because every time I'm doing that, all they should really see is my turret. Uh, because it's my turret is the, o the only thing that's able to see them basically. And that's why it's it's a smaller area uh, uh, to fire from. So highly recommend um, playing that that way. And then bear in mind, like, hey, you know, you are mobile. So just because you've been fighting an area or spotted in an area and stuff like that, you don't necessarily have to stay in said area. So like here, I see that these guys are pulling back. Um, so I know that they're they're scared. They don't feel that they can win now. I could have just pushed them and kept pushing, uh, but you got to bear in mind, if they're scared, they probably already called for help. Um, and not only that, but they also probably called that they're going to they're gonna pull back, which means now they're looking to have their teammates probably line up to shoot there. So I don't want to go there, um, especially alone, because as you can see, my team is not doing anything for me. They're not really helping at all. Uh, they didn't really fire too much at the targets, as you can see there was no spotting, uh, or no damage assistance, even though I spotted all the targets. Um, I did do 631 damage, which means I did get two shots in, but that, that's it, right? So, not a big help. So, it looks like they've been spending a lot of time concentrating on this Pershing that they didn't really get, but they were at least able to get this T25-2 here. Now, as I'm maneuvering here, like I said, I called it out, I pinged it, told them, hey, I need help. Now, funny enough, it turns out my team actually is watching here. So they did pay attention to my call. And as you can see, all of them fired. And all 
of them did not manage to hurt him. Like, with all of them shots, that guy should have been dead. And I should have got a lot of assistance. And that's sometimes how it goes. And then here's the part I was talking about, you know, again, using using the layout of the land to try to help me um, and play it smart, right? So I'm lower than those the rocks, the hill, and stuff like that. So now I'm just keeping it to where only my turret is really exposed. Now, obviously, when I came up there, that was like a, a choice where I have it where to the side, only my turret would be exposed, but to the front, uh, they would have had a shot right on me, but then I kept it slightly angled, so that way I have as optimal armor as I can. Um, and speaking on, so this tank uh, benefits as a 20 degree uh, rotation. So if you were to center you to, to the center of your opponent and you turn your, your uh, hull like 20 degrees, that actually would be your optimal armor. Um, so that makes it really hard for them to penetrate your armor at, at that point. Now that's all dependent on what kind of gunner they're using, so on and so forth. So here's a case, like I said, I'm just playing through, being maneuverable, moving around, trying to keep it to where artillery is going to have a hard time hitting me, and that's that's really the gist of it. Um, so I hope this I hope this stuff helps you guys. Uh, if you like it, please feel free like, subscribe, let me know what you think, leave comments. Um, tell me if there's particular tanks that you're looking for, even tank lines, right? So um, as I continue through, I'm going to do each individual tank. I will be doing premiums. I will be doing tank lines. I will review it much like I said. You know, Not only is it worth it, but why is it worth it? And what is the benefit overall um, in comparison to everything else, right? So I hope this helps. Uh, and I apologize. There, there's There's times I'm actually playing and I have music going um, and I'm doing like this uh, was it like replay back from NVIDIA so it, it'll save basically the last 15 minutes and I tell it, yeah that's that's what I want and it's got the music in there it, it, if it bothers you guys and you don't like the music or something like that let me know and I'll strip the music out um, I'll have to try to see how I can do that I have an editing tool I just haven't tried stripping out any audio yet uh, mainly because I also try to leave the audio for for the gameplay so you can actually hear the shots and I, I make sure to minimize that audio as much as possible so it shouldn't be that loud for you but again I, I do appreciate uh, you guys watching I hope this stuff is very helpful and then if you guys have ideas for things that you want to see or anything like that just you know uh, drop a line let me know I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the video and I again I'm gonna be doing this pretty much every week so I hope to have, uh, and by the way, I'm, I'm, tr I'm trying to now do it to where I will post a video on every Friday. Uh, before, I was just trying to kind of push them all out, but I found out we can schedule. So I'm now scheduling on YouTube to have a video on every Friday. Uh, so some weeks you guys might see more, but at the bare minimum, you should see a consistency of one video per week. All right. Thanks, everyone.